When I left school, I planned to save the planet. Literally, I decided to become an ecologist. I'd grown up in agriculture, but what interested me more was everything that was around the crops and growing in the crops, the insects, the plants, the trees. I was interested in all of that, and that's where my heart truly lay. That is until the famines in the 80s hit in Africa, and millions of people literally starved to death. And that brought home to me what my sociology teachers at school had been trying to explain. The fact that without a food supply that you can rely upon to deliver quality food, there is basically nothing else. We would lose the roads, the streets, the buildings, the hospitals. None of that is possible without an adequate supply of food, food for everybody. And so I decided I was going to save the planet by helping people farm and I switched into agriculture. I studied agriculture and I became a farmer. And what did I learn? Well, I learned that growing food is really tough. Farmers have a real difficult task. And then at the end of it, when they finally bring those crops in for harvest, what I learned is that there is no elasticity in the price of the food that they make. It doesn't matter what we do and how good a quality the food is, we do not pay proportionally more for higher quality food. So it's a real tough deal that they have. You can take the boy out of ecology, but you cannot get the ecologist out of the boy. And whilst I was doing that work, it became obvious to me that many of the tools that the farmers were given to use and that he had to use in order to grow those crops were effectively blunt instruments. And that whilst they did the things that the farmer needed, they also had unintended consequences. But food supply is needed. And so there really is little choice. So it became my life's mission to find a way to provide viable choices for farmers and growers to use ever more subtle tools and to bring forward the age of what I call the ecological agriculture. That is where you manage the pests and you don't just try to obliterate them. So we saw integrated pest management and that became integrated crop management, but still those tools were themselves uh, still somewhat blunt. So I continued to work and to search for products that were more selective, that were more efficient and more effective, and preferably of a biological origin. And, you know, I had several successes, but I could never find something that was truly a platform that was gonna offer the solutions. Things that had a minimum ecological impact, things that had a minimum use of fossil fuels. Pretty much everything that growers were using was coming from the petrochemical industry. Nothing really came along that was a platform. That is until RNA came along. Now, RNA is a technology and its potential for use in agriculture. I've been tracking since the late 1990s, but I was never in a position to really jump in and help solve the big issues that it had. I followed it, so I was fortunate enough to watch one of the early applications into the field. Guys drove up into the field in a pickup truck. They pulled a nitrogen flask from the back. They took the lid off and took a sample out of that, and out of the top of the flask was coming all of this liquid nitrogen turned into gas. It looked like a scene from a science fiction movie things have moved on, but there were still big holes. How could you deliver it so that it would work? And how could you make it to scale? And these problems remained pretty much unsolved until Greenlight came along. They had a team that could solve those challenges for bringing RNA to growers. Truly viable choices that will allow them to feed the populations with food and not chemical residues, and that will still allow them to make money they need to continue in business. But most importantly for me, this platform will allow them to be the stewards of the planet that we need them to be.